Today we're going to talk about trauma kits and how to treat gunshot or puncture wounds. A couple of years ago, Skinny Medic and I put together a video demonstrating some of the things you need to do. And this is one of the brand new trauma kits that Skinny Medic's putting together on his website. And we're going to look at all the different items and then we're going to show you how to use them in a real world situation. Guys, if you're doing EMS, if you're law enforcement, fire, or even just going to the range, you definitely need to have a trauma kit because you never know when something can happen. Now here are some of the reasons why you want to have a trauma kit. Uh, you know, you can look here at these expanded bullets and some of them can really be wildly expanded. And so that's going to create a canal inside your body. This will cause a huge loss of blood. And so you need to definitely be able to get the bleeding stopped. The Molly pouch I chose to put this kit in is the EMT Condor EMT pouch. It's got Molly on the outside so you can put other attachments to the outside. Attach it to your vest, to your range bag, to your backpack. Because I've had law enforcement officers attach this to their headrest. That way this is close by and easy to get to. Yeah, you can even loop that into a belt loop if you pull that through, can't you? Absolutely. All right, going through the contents of the trauma kit. You have two chest seals, Cellox roll, a pair of trauma sears. You have two non-latex Teflon gloves, two pair, cat tourniquet, an emergency bandage, pressure bandage. Then we have a number 28 MPA. Bullet goes round and round, air goes in and out. When there's a problem with either one, you die. In the kit, it comes with two chest seals made by North American Rescue. That's to remind you that there can be an exit wound when you're dealing with gunshot wounds. Always check your patient's back. And if your patient has multiple gunshot wounds to the chest, it gives you enough coverage to prevent air from leaking into the chest cavity. When dealing with a sucking chest wound, this is going to prevent your patient from developing a tension pneumothorax, which is the lung collapsing. It actually shifts the heart over, which prevents the heart from pumping, blood not moving round and round, will cause you to die. You can see they have the red tabs here, easy to locate where you're going to tear this open. The 4x4 here is to wipe dirt, wipe blood away from the entry or the exit wound on the chest cavity. There again we have the red tab to pull. And this gets slapped onto the chest cavity. This side here is super sticky, which is going to help create the seal on the chest cavity. Heart sitting right about in this area. So if you get shot there, you're dead anyway. The wound's here, so we're simulating that we're going to cover the sucking chest wound here. The most common gunshot wounds are typically in your extremities, your arms and your legs. And so studies have shown that that's where people get hit. So that's really one of the important things about having a tourniquet. Now before these commercial tourniquets were available, most of your bleed outs were from him from extremities, from your arms or legs, and those are really preventable. Extremity injuries were the most leading cause of preventable death until the mass productions of the tourniquets. Using the cat tourniquet is to stop life-threatening hemorrhage in your arms and your legs. If you're dealing with a high stress, low light situation, you can put the tourniquet as high up on the extremity as possible, and that makes sure that you cover the gunshot wound or the puncture wound. But if you're in a stable environment, then you can just apply the tourniquet several inches above the puncture wound or the gunshot wound. Just don't do it over a joint. When applying the cat tourniquet to an upper extremity, all that is needed is to go through the first buckle here, the first loop on the buckle. All right, we're gonna go through the first loop here. Cinch this tourniquet down. You really have to cinch the Velcro down. Try to put as much pressure on the tourniquet as if you were gonna control bleeding by just using the Velcro. Here's your Windsor. You can tighten this. It should control bleeding within just a couple of turns, but you want to turn this until the bleeding is controlled. You can take the extra Velcro strap here. It gets tucked in to the carrier and mark the time if you get a chance. If you tuck the strap in here, then that prevents it from getting pulled loose when you're evacuating your patient out. When applying it to the lower extremity, you do need to go through both sides of the buckle just because you don't have as much Velcro to attach to, so you do need to go through both sides to get more leverage. All right, going through both buckles here. Really get it cinched down. Turn the Windsor until bleeding stops. Plug this in so it doesn't get pulled loose. Mark your time down. 
So once the cat tourniquet came into play, then the next area they needed to tend to was under the armpits and around the groin area. And so that's what we're gonna use these to take care of. Next thing we're gonna talk about is a Celox roll. This is a 10 foot by three inch hemostatic agent roll. When packing a wound, you're wanting to get bulk to try to cover the cavity that was just created. So this gives you the most bulk right now on the market. It's a hemostatic agent. It's gonna help uh, control bleeding when you pack your wound. All right, here's the Celox roll. You can see the hemostatic agent actually is binded onto the roll. When dealing with a wound that you've got to pack, the most important thing you've got to do is actually put your finger in there and locate the actual artery. If you can't locate the artery, you're just packing a void area, so it's not going to work. You need to pin down the artery. So put your finger there, insert it, and you do not take pressure off of the artery as you're packing the wound. This pulls here, tuck, pull and tuck. So at all times, I have a finger in Such's armpit. Pack it until you have packed the entire wound. All right, here's the six inch emergency pressure bandage. Whenever you are packing a wound, you've got to create the pressure on top of the wound to help control arterial bleeding. All right, now that we've got the wound packed, you need to put a pressure bandage to hold pressure onto the wound. And then when Suge lowers his arm down, it's actually going to help create more pressure and hold the bandage into place. If you need extra pressure, you can use the pressure applicator here to gain more pressure for the wound. Pull this tight, and this comes right back. You just don't want to put this over the actual gunshot wound or puncture wound, this piece of plastic. Another way you can apply this here is too. Once you get all your excess wrapped up, this clips in. You can clip it into one or both sides to keep it from coming unraveled. If you're unable to get the bleeding controlled when applying the cat tourniquet, the first thing you should do is try to tighten the Windsor and see if you can get it tighter. If not, they recommend applying either a second cat tourniquet or another tourniquet. You can use the raised bandage, emergency bandage, the pressure bandings as your second tourniquet. And to protect your patient's airway, we have a number 28 MPA, number 28 nose hose. Comes with lubrication if you're trying to insert. This is a rubber tube, so insert in someone's nose to protect their airway who has an ultra level of consciousness. They're not able to protect their own airway. This goes in through their nose, and this is a rubber tube, so you need some lubrication. When inserting the MPA, the bevel goes to the inside to the nose, to the septum of the nose, goes in, the patient's this way, it goes in this way. And this goes all the way to the tip of their nose. The MPA will not affect your patient's gag reflex and still protect their airway. Including the kit is two pair of non-latex Teflon gloves. These are good gloves, they're not gonna tear. It's always important when dealing with other people's blood to protect yourself. These are non-latex gloves, so dealing with people who have latex allergies or if you yourself have latex allergies, you don't have to worry about with these gloves. And of course, anytime you're dealing with trauma, if you can't see the wound, can't see the puncture, can't see the gunshot wound, you can't fix it. So, good pair of trauma sears to expose your patient to see what you're treating. Guys, it's really important to have a kit to be able to take care of this kind of trauma. Whether it's for you, for a buddy of yours, for a family member, having one of these on hand could be life-saving. The price on these trauma kits is $119.99, and that includes shipping. Uh, you also get an extra 10% discount using Such when you check out. And you can find that at medicalgearoutfitters.com. Or you can also find it at shop.skinnymedic.com. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. I want to thank Skinny Medic for coming out and going through the trauma kit with us. And, yeah, I do. I want to thank him. And I'm <laughs> okay. Now, did I thank you before I did this? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I thought I thanked you. Mm -hmm. Good, because I didn't want to have to thank you again. <laughs> How many times I got to thank you? That's funny. So get right up on my no hair chest. This is what you don't do. Yeah, this is not what you want to do. Hold a sec. Put okay. your I know you're bleeding to death, sir. Hold yeah, on. Thank you. So once the cat tourniquet came into. Uh, 
So once the tag cur Oh my gosh, that hurt! Man, that's not worth the 50 bucks you're gonna pay me for doing this. Ah! I shouldn't have blown like that. It didn't come out. <laughs> okay, let me do that again. <laughs>